Wow. wow. I mean, there's flavor in the filling. There's flavor in the masa. There's flavor in the flavor. Did you know there's around 300 ways to make tamales just in Mexico alone? I myself have made different variations in today's red chicken tamales have the stamp of approval from my mother. They are moist, soft, flavorful, all the things you love in a tamal. So let me show you how to make them. We need four pounds of skin on bone in chicken thighs and just season them generously with salt. Also do a generous amount of freshly ground black pepper. Flip and let's do the other side. All right, now let's brown it. For this step, place a large pot over medium high heat. Heat a couple of tablespoons of avocado oil. Lay the chicken skin side down and brown it in batches if you need to to prevent overcrowding the pot. That way you get a nice color all around. Now let's flip it so the other side does the same. Look at that. Nice and crispy. Last batch it looks great. Now pour in one gallon of water. Place the rest of the chicken back into the pot. Grab a head of garlic, slice that end off, and add it into the pot. Quarter a whole white onion. I'm just gonna remove the top peel. Technically you could leave it since we're gonna strain the broth later on, but you know me. Now add in a quarter of a bunch of fresh cilantro, a bunch of mint leaves, fresh oregano, fresh thyme, and they're about five sprigs each. Now do three bay leaves, one teaspoon of whole allspice, and that's it. Now bring it up to a boil and remove some of that foam that's gonna rise to the top. Lower the heat to medium low. Let it reach a simmer, cover the pot, allow the chicken to fully cook. It'll take about 30 minutes. All right, while well, that's happening, we're gonna make that sauce for the filling. Remove the seeds, veins, and stem from 12 guajillos, eight puyas, and two ancho, all Mexican dried peppers. Guajillos are three of the top most used peppers in Mexico for a good reason. I mean, they're mild in heat. They don't have an overpowering flavor, which makes it perfect to pair with other peppers. When you think of puya, just think of it as the guajillo sibling because they are similar in flavor. It's just that this one is actually skinnier, but has an added kick of heat. Anchos, on the other hand, have a very distinctive flavor. They are going to provide us with those sweet, fruity kind of chocolatey tones. With a damp paper towel, wipe the peppers clean because we don't want to get them completely wet since they are going to be toasted later on. And now just cut them into smaller pieces. Set these aside momentarily. It's going to give them enough time to dry out. Now let's check that chicken because it's ready. Alrighty, this is looking gorgeous. Now remove all of that chicken. Set this aside and allow it to slightly cool down. That way we can shred it. Now strain all of the broth into a large container. Now that we've done that, let's finish off that sauce. Grab a white onion and roughly dice it. Actually, I just needed half a white onion, so I'm just gonna set the other half and use it for something else later on. Smash and peel six medium to large garlic cloves. These are jumbo, so I'm actually only gonna do four. Place a medium saucepan over medium heat. Add a few tablespoons of avocado oil. Add in the onion and garlic. And just saute this until slightly softened. Time for a teaspoon of Mexican dry oregano. Half a teaspoon of whole cumin. And we want to toast these for about a minute. That way they have enough time to release those oils and deepen those flavors. Now the dried peppers. And these really benefit from toasting as well because, again, those flavors are really going to awaken. Avoid burning them because they turn really bitter. It's going to ruin your sauce. So as soon as you start to smell those aromas, you're going to know they're ready for the next step. Okay, these are good to go. Turn off the heat. Measure out three cups of that still hot broth and add it straight into the peppers carefully. Now just to let them to hydrate for about 10 to 15 minutes. Grab that chicken and it should be warm enough to handle. Remove the skin and bones. We're not gonna use them, you can just discard them. This could be the time to meditate on how many tamales you're gonna eat while you're shredding the chicken. Grab a blender and add all of those peppers with the garlic, you know, everything that's in the saucepan. 
straight into a blender. Cover it, remove that top off, and I'm gonna place a towel right on top. Now let's blend it until smooth and that chili skin has completely broken down. Allow the blender to do its magic, but even if after that you still have big pieces of chili skin, feel free to strain it. For now, let's move over to the stove. Just set a saucepan over medium heat and pour in the sauce. Add in an additional cup of chicken broth. So we're a little round so that we get all of that sauce out of there and pour it into the pot. So I'm gonna make it a little bit looser by adding an additional cup of that broth because we wanna be able to cook it down. See, this right here should be your starting consistency. Once it reaches a gentle simmer, allow it to cook for five to 10 minutes until it slightly thickens and you also get a deeper red color. Okay, look at this right here, lovely. I'm gonna remove a cup of it for later on. Add salt to taste. Finally mix in the chicken and this is coming together beautifully. Cook this for a couple of minutes, allow that chicken to reheat back up again and you're done. Just turn off the heat. Now we need to wait for this to cool down before we can even assemble our tamales. For the corn husk, we're gonna need about 36 medium to large in size. And we do wanna sort through them, that way we get the best looking ones without holes or dark spots. Soak them in water for about 15 to 30 minutes. Put a plate on top to keep them submerged. Then rinse them, remove any corn silk, and drain them. Husk are prepped. Now in a large bowl, add in six cups of masarina, and this is the same kind that I use for making tortillas. Season it with two and a half teaspoons of kosher salt or to taste, one tablespoon of baking powder, and just mix that with your hands. Make sure it is well distributed all around. Set it aside momentarily. Let's bring out a larger bowl. <laughs> Add a half a cup of pork lard. Now with a whisk or your hand, mix it in there. You may get a different consistency depending on the lard that you're using. The end result should always be nice and smooth. I've been doing this for about five minutes and most of those lumps are gone. We've developed a wider color and it looks a little more frothy. When making tamales, I find that using just lard can be a little overpowering, so I like to do a combination of fats. In this instance, I'm gonna add one cup of avocado oil and just get it mixed in with the lard. Knead in half of the masa mixture, and I'm gonna do it by hand. This is all by hand, by feel. And let's just add the remainder. This is looking like wet sand. Now it's time for that cup of the chili sauce that we reserved earlier. The rest of the moisture is gonna come from three to four cups of that warm broth we had from earlier. Just add it gradually. You don't wanna use it all at once because sometimes it takes less, sometimes it takes more. It's all about feel. Need in between additions, just get everything nicely moistened. This is ready and I used three and a quarter cups of the broth, but as you can see, it's very, very soft. When you grab it, you can mold it into a ball. It doesn't look dry because this is fully hydrated, plus that fat is really moistening the dough. Now I'm just gonna continue to knead for five minutes. We've got our smooth, soft ball of dough. Now my mother's trick is to take your fist, stamp it in there, and it should turn out super glossy. Then you know these tamales have enough fat in the masa, it's nicely moistened. It's time to assemble these beauties because they are, we have the filling ready. I covered the dough with a towel, that way it doesn't dry out. If anything, you can always mix in a little more broth and the husk are ready as well. Grab a husk and shake off some of that excess water if you feel like you need to do it. Place it on a flat surface. We are gonna be using the smooth side of the leaf. Take some of the dough, roll it into a ball, then flatten into a disc. Place it right in the center and start spreading in all directions, leaving a little bit of space on both sides of the leaf and the bottom wider end. As for the top, you can go a little over midway. Take a generous amount of the filling. We don't wanna be stingy, but then remember, you wanna be able to close up the mud, so don't get greedy. 
So just take one side, fold it over to the opposite end, lightly press, peel the husk, fold it over to the opposite end again. To tuck the leaf, just roll, pinch the top, fold it downward, pinch the bottom if you can, and just make the rest of the tamales following the same steps. Bring in the family. Remember, teamwork makes the dream work. So I try to pass down as much as I can from what my mother knows, what my grandma knew. Yeah. To me, it's, it's about passing down generational traditions. In total, it should make 24 to 26 tamales, give or take. And if you have some filling left over, make yourself a taco. The excitement is real because the hunger is real. <laughs> We just finished wrapping all of the tamales. I placed a large steamer pot with its base at the bottom and added about eight cups of water because I wanted to cover the bottom but not touch the base. I'm just gonna bring this to a boil over medium high heat. Just take a few husks and cover the bottom. It prevents anything from dripping into the water. I don't know, it's just a cleaner process. There's a lot of ways to arrange the tamales inside the pot but I always go back to my mother's way. There's no going wrong with it, and I just simply love it. All I'm gonna do is make a T shape with three tamales open side facing each other right in the center. That's gonna be our base. Now just arrange the remainder all around, making sure that open side is facing up. Cover the top with additional husks. And these don't have to be perfect. They can have some holes in there. Use the ones that you couldn't use for the tamales. And I can hear that it's about to start boiling. Take a damp, clean kitchen towel and place it right on top. It's gonna ensure those tamales are nicely wrapped and they get steamed. I can hear that water is going crazy, which means it's boiling. You will also be able to see some steam on top. Just close the pot, lower the heat to medium low and allow them to cook, steam for about 50 minutes to an hour. We just want that masarina to fully cook, so I'll see you in a bit. These look gorgeous, they look ready. They took one hour and 10 minutes. I'm just gonna remove a couple of them because I want them to cool down, set up a bit more so that I can confirm that they're actually ready. And these can just remain covered until we know for sure that they're ready. As for these, let them rest for five minutes. You're gonna know that the mud is ready when they release from the husk very easily. They set up and also the dough does not taste like raw masa anymore. And look at this beauty. Oh my goodness. I mean, talk about moist, soft, wow. You got so soft. I know, so good. All right, let's do this. Let's, let's taste. Mm. Wow. wow. <laughs> Nothing else to say. I love me some good tamales. Wow. These are soft, moist, flavorful. I mean, there's flavor in the filling. There's flavor in the masa. There's flavor in the flavor. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. People may think that we eat tamales every day, but we don't. And I wish we would, because these tamales are so good. <laughs> if only we could, huh? Mm. <laughs> I like to preserve tips, tricks, things that were passed down from my mother to me, and I'm sure they were passed down from my grandmother to her, that are so important. And now you guys get to try this at home. Then it gets passed down to me. <laughs> Through eating them. Mm. 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 Wow. I really hope you try this recipe at home. Don't forget you can follow us on all of our social media platforms. The full printable recipe is available on villacocina.com for your convenience. I guess. Please, please try this recipe. My goodness. It is so good. So good. Till the next one. Bye. I'm done.